Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will um, spend some time solving problems. My, my, my favorite kind of thing. Um, now, I hope I will be able to solve these problems. They're, they're supposed to be very simple. Um, it's uh, all about uh, lines and planes in three-dimensional uh, space. Some of them actually we did address before, so maybe it's a little bit repetitious. Um, anyway, this is part of the advanced mathematics course for teenagers, uh, presented on unizor.com, where I suggest you to watch this lecture from because it has notes with the conditions of these problems. Um, and I do suggest you to spend some time before you watch this lecture, try to solve these problems yourself. They're not difficult at all. So, um, well, let's just try to do it. Okay, first I wanted to remind you three major axioms. Basically, everything in solid geometry is, is based upon. It's not a complete set of axioms. Complete set of axioms is a very big one. But these are major ones which you will be using like always in all the proofs which, which you make. So, the first axiom says that if you have uh, two points that belong to the same line, A and B belong to the same line, A, lowercase a, and these two line, uh, these two points also belong to the same plane gamma. Therefore, an entire line belongs to the plane gamma. So if you have a plane and you have two points of a line belong to this plane, then every point on the line which connects them also is part of this plane. So that's one thing. Next thing is if you have two planes intersecting with each other and there is some point A which belongs to this intersection, then there is a line straight line which actually is there I should say belongs to not equal to then there is a line straight line which is their intersection which contains this point A so if you have one plane and then another plane and they intersect somewhere and there is a point A which belongs to this intersection so there is a line, straight line which is their intersection it belongs to both of those so it's actually is an intersection is a line which contains this point. So that's the second axiom. And the third axiom is very simple. If you have three points in space which do not lie on the same line, then there is one and only one plane which passes through these three points. So three points not on the same line uniquely define a plane which contains them. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you these main axioms because you will always be eventually using it somewhere all right so now let's go to the problem uh, problem the pe first problem is uh, construct a plane which intersects three given planes well it's actually a very simple thing because you can pick one point on each of the plane of the three given planes and three points, uniquely or not uniquely, define the plane. If they are not on the same line, they uniquely identify the plane. And since these three points belong to three different planes, let's say you have one plane, 
we have another plane somehow here and the third plane so you pick three points and since three points define the plane so we can always draw some kind of a plane which goes through this through these three points and obviously it will intersect this plane this plane and this plane because the points belong to these three planes right now if they are on the same line just by accident it's still uh, possible to draw a plane through uh, this line so through any line we can draw ma as many pla planes as we want to so again we can construct any um, any plane which intersects these three so there is no problem with this okay this is easy well they're all easy next is I believe we have already addressed it before but as a repetition I would like to mention it right now if you have two um, angles in space formed by uh, two pairs of half lines and the sides of the angles are correspondingly parallel then the angles are congruent so here it is you have one let's say a b and point p and then you have another a prime b prime p prime so a parallel to a prime b parallel to b prime in space in three-dimensional space then i'm uh, saying that this is uh, these two angles are congruent now how can we prove it well we can do it this way let's take some segment and put this segment here 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 and here let's call it a b a prime b prime so p a is equal to p b is equal to p prime a prime equals to p prime b prime okay okay now let's connect P to P prime, A to A prime, and B to B prime. So, what can we say about P A A prime P prime? Well, P A and P prime A prime are parallel, right? Because lines A and A prime are parallel, which means they lie in the same plane and do not intersect, right? Okay. Also, P A is equal to P I uh, P prime A prime by lengths. So, in this plane, P A A prime P prime, in this plane which contains these two parallel lines and these two basically uh, segments are equal, we are talking about parallelogram because it's a, a quadrilateral, quadrilateral which has two opposite sides uh, parallel and equal in length to each other that means this is the parallelogram which means p a p p p p prime and a a prime are parallel and equal so p p prime parallel and equal to a a prime now similarly P B B prime P prime is also a parallelogram because P B is parallel to P prime B prime and equal in length. So therefore, we can say that P P prime is parallel and equal to B B prime. So all three of them, P P prime, A A prime, and B B prime, they are all equal to each other in length and parallel which means that if I will move this figure within, uh, 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 along this, this direction on the same distance my point P will go into point P prime E goes to A prime and B goes to B prime which proves congruence of these two angles that's it 
Now, um, this is very important because this particular theorem will be used in others. So, it, again, let me just repeat it. If two angles have parallel, correspondingly parallel sides in space, then the angles are uh, congruent. Okay, next. Okay, next I have a plane and two lines, A and B. I know that they are parallel and I also know that line B is perpendicular to the plane, gamma. I have to prove that the second line is also perpendicular, all right? So one is perpendicular and another is parallel to a perpendicular. Uh, all right. These are bases. So, how can I prove perpendicularity of A to the plane gamma? Well, you remember that um, there is a very important uh, characteristic of perpendicularity. Perpendicular is defined as the line which is perpendicular to all lines which go through this base. But there is a sufficient condition, it's sufficient to be perpendicular to two lines. So, what I'm saying is the following. I will draw from this base of the perpendicular B one line and another which connects to this base of the A. And from this base I will draw a parallel to this one. So, what happens is the following. This angle is straight uh, I mean right, sorry, straight. It, it's, a, it's a right angle, right? Because B is perpendicular. But now, since this line is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this, this is also perpendicular. Now, same thing with this angle. This is the right angle, because B is perpendicular. Now, A is also making the same angle because again A is parallel to B and this is one in the same line so it's parallel to itself so this angle is also right angle. So here we have two uh, lines the A is perpendicular to this one and this one. That's a sufficient condition for A to be a perpendicular to gamma. So if you have two parallel lines, one is perpendicular, another is also perpendicular to the same plane. Next. Well, in a way, it's uh, basically a reverse problem. You have two lines, again. A perpendicular to gamma and B perpendicular to gamma. So perpendicularity is given now and I have to prove the parallelism. Now the previous problem was the parallelism was given and one of them is perpendicular then another is perpendicular. Now I have another one is also perpendicular and I have to prove the parallel. So two perpendiculars to the same plane um, are parallel to each other. Okay, so we know both of them are perpendicular. Question is to prove that they are parallel. All right, well, let's do um, a, a, a trick which is actually um, is using the previous theorem. Let me from the point A draw a line parallel to B. A prime. 
Now, by previous theorem, I know that this line is supposed to be perpendicular to the plane gamma. So, if A is perpendicular and A prime is perpendicular, I have one point from which two perpendiculars um, are going to the same plane. And when we were actually discussing this issue in one of the previous lectures, we, we have proven that uh, if, if, if there is a plane and a point uh, on this plane, there is one and only one perpendicular to this plane. Um, which means that A and A prime are supposed to be one and the same, which means A is parallel to B as well as A prime is parallel by construction. So we are basically referring to the previous theorem and the fact of the uniqueness of the perpendicular at point. Okay. Okay, the next is the theorem the, uh, about the following. If you have a plane and a line parallel to this plane, then the distance from all points to the plane is exactly the same. So let's pick up two points, A and B. Well, actually in my notes I call them M and N. So let's call it M and N. Now, you remember that the distance from a point to a plane is measured by the perpendicular to the plane. You have to make a projection. This is P and this is Q. Okay, so basically I have to prove that MP equals to NQ. Now, MP is a perpendicular, NQ is perpendicular. By previous problem, these two are supposed to be parallel to each other, which means they belong to the same plane. So M, N, Q, and P belong to the same plane. Okay, that's, that's good. Well, what is PQ? PQ is intersection of this plane, M and QP, with gamma. With plane gamma. Right? Because if two points belong to a plane, the line in between belongs, it's one of the axioms, right? So, what I can say is that M and QP plane is intersecting plane gamma along the line PQ. All right. Now, there was another theorem that if you have a line parallel to a plane and any other plane which goes through this line, then the intersection of that other, lane, uh, other plane would be parallel to the line itself. So that was another theorem which we have learned in uh, the lecture where I introduced the parallelism between lines and planes. Which means that PQ is parallel to MN. Now before that I mentioned that MP is parallel to NQ as two perpendiculars to the same um, plane. So within the plane M and Q P, M and Q P is parallelogram because the opposite sides are correspondingly parallel to each other. And obviously, the consequence of this is this: that M P is equal to N Q. So two perpendiculars from two different points on the line which is parallel to. Uh, the plane, the perpendiculars to this plane are equal in length, which means that the plane and line are equidistant. Wherever you make the measure of the distance between the point here to the plane, it will be exactly the same. 
which is obvious. I mean, if you are lying parallel to the plane, obviously you are moving on the same distance from the plane all the time. So this is a clue. This is a proof. Okay. Now, my last problem is if you have three planes and two of them, let's say gamma, delta, and rho. If you have two of them separately parallel to the third, then they're supposed to be parallel to each other. So if this parallel to this and this parallel to this, they must be parallel to each other. Again, obviously it's obvious. Obviously, obviously it's obvious. <laughs> yes, I mean visually it's obvious. All right, how can we prove it? Well, um, here is what we can do. Um, well, let's assume that they are not parallel, which means they intersect somewhere. Something like this. And this is their intersection, just for chance. Okay, um, now let's pick point here and any point here or two points here and draw a plane. Now this plane would intersect all three planes, right? Along some lines. Now, there was another theorem before we were proving when we were talking about planes, parallel planes and traversal, that if you have two parallel planes and traversal, then the intersection lines are parallel to each other. So, we have some kind of a line of intersection of our new plane here, here, and here, right? So, these two lines are supposed to be parallel to each other because it's the result of the intersection of the plane which goes through these three points with this and with this. Now, these are... Um, we have to prove that these are parallel, right? But what we, what we can do is that uh, if they are not parallel, it means that they are actually intersecting at this point. Now, within this new plane, which contains this line, well, and obviously this line, this point, this line, this line, and, and, and this line. Within this um, fourth plane, this is supposed to be parallel to this, right? Because gamma and rho are parallel to each other. This is the condition of our problem. And we have cut these two parallel planes with this fourth plane. So this line and this line are supposed to be parallel to each other. Now, this line and this line also are supposed to be parallel to each other because delta and rho are parallel to each other. So within this, neck, uh, w within this fourth plane, we have an interesting situation. We have this line parallel to this and this line parallel to this, but nevertheless, they intersect at some. These two intersect at some point. Now, this is a pure plane geometry, and we know that this is impossible because if two lines are separately parallel to uh, the third one, they are supposed to be parallel to each other and to do not intersect. So that's the contradiction. So what we have done, we have reduced the three-dimensional problem into two-dimensional by cutting uh, through some point which, which lies on presumable intersection of these two planes. So we presume that there is an intersection and we came to a conclusion 
um, the, the incorrect conclusion that uh, in the plane geometry is basically impossible. The two lines which are separately inter uh, uh, parallel to the third one I I intersect, which is impossible. So that proves that our initial consideration that these two planes uh, somewhere intersect is wrong. So they do not intersect, which means they are parallel. Well, that completes this set of problems, very easy problems. As you see, um, I maybe made just one extra uh, drawing, one extra construction, if you wish, to prove these, um, these statements. So these are easy problems, and uh, what I would suggest you to do is um, go to the website unizor.com, look at the conditions of these problems, look at whatever, whatever they're stating, and try to uh, either replicate or come up with a different uh, proof of whatever I just did. Um, it would probably better um, educate you in, in a relatively strict logic which we are trying to, um, to achieve right now in these conditions. All right, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.